Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and you know what, 2016 has been a great year for astronomy and it's about to end, or maybe it's already ended if you're watching this in the future. In this video I wanted to summarize some of the coolest discoveries of this year and give you a visual representation of what we actually found out there in space. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And as we're leaving our planet Earth, let's briefly summarize some of the biggest discoveries. One is that we've discovered the gravitational waves that were predicted by Einstein something like 100 years ago. We've also realized that dark matter is not what we thought it was. As a matter of fact, we still have no idea what it was and what it is, and we've found nothing, even though there were at least four experiments this year that were supposed to find the so-called dark matter. Lastly, we also realized that maybe dark energy doesn't exist either, because maybe, just maybe, it was a miscalculation on our part. So there are some discoveries that will hopefully be clarified next year, but let's actually focus on more tangible things. For example, let's go to our neighbor Proxima Centauri, and let's actually take a look at what we found there. Now in Space Engine, all of these uh, planets around Proxima Centauri are procedurally generated, but in reality we've actually discovered an Earth-like planet orbiting around Proxima Centauri in the habitable zone, where basically you would expect uh, to have liquid water and possibly even, maybe, just maybe, life. So a lot of excitement about Proxima Centauri B as it's now known, and this is just a representation of one such planet in Space Engine that actually does have life on it. This is Proxima Centauri 4 that surprisingly has life. So anyway, that was a very, very big discovery and hopefully in the next uh, decade or so we'll be able to look at this uh, particular planet in more detail or possibly even visit it. That would be pretty awesome, right? And anyway, so that's discovery number one, Proxima Centauri B. Potentially our new home in the future. Let's go a little bit closer to home and take a look at our beautiful neighbor Mars. What have we discovered about Mars? Well, quite a lot of things actually. One of those discoveries was a very, 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 very large ice deposit size of Lake Superior underneath the Martian surface. Meaning that Mars seems to still have quite a lot of water in ice format somewhere underneath the surface. But we've also detected what seems to be a liquid water in very salty, briny kind of substance that seems to actually create very unusual jetties and very unusual patterns on the surface of Mars, which unfortunately I can't show you here because we can't really zoom in that far. But nevertheless, water on Mars has been officially rediscovered. We know there's a lot of it. And this also gives us an opportunity for potential colonization and terraforming of Mars in the future. And speaking of liquid water, we've also confirmed liquid water on Europa, the uh, very, very large moon of Jupiter. We've finally seen the plumes of water coming out from the surface, meaning that underneath all of the ice, there's a very, very large ocean with even more water than there is on the planet Earth. So maybe one day we'll be able to dig through all of this ice and go inside Europa and take a look at what's underneath or possibly fly right next to it, capture some of those plumes, and maybe even discover life underneath Europa that way. All of this will come in the future with the new missions to Jupiter. And another cool discovery from our own solar system is Makemake. Well, this is a dwarf planet that we've discovered quite a few years ago, but what we've discovered now about it is that it just so happens to have a moon. There's a moon. Look at that. There it is. It's really tiny. It's a frozen asteroid, but it's a really tiny moon of Makemake. So we now know that this particular dwarf planet actually hosts a moon, which means that we can now calculate its mass, its size, and everything else about it relatively accurately. So that's pretty cool. Especially considering that Makemake isn't really that big to begin with. It's only about 12% of the size of Earth, and so it is a relatively small dwarf planet. Now let's go outside of our solar system and take a look at some of the really cool discoveries of exoplanets as well. So in 2016, over 1300 new exoplanets have been discovered by NASA and by, I guess, other scientists as well. And two of these, uh, specifically this one right here, Kepler 1638b, that I'm going to jump to in a second. And there it is, very, very beautifully procedurally generated a ringed um, hot desert that uh, you see in front of you. This is actually a very beautiful planet, wow. 
and another one known as Kepler 1229b. Both of these planets are actually the most Earth-like planets we've discovered so far. Both of these have like 84% Earth-likeness. This is a scale that we use for identifying and basically establishing if a planet is Earth-like. And in this case, it's 84%. That's actually very, very high. Not only does this mean that these planets are in the habitable zone of their parent stars, but it also suggests that maybe, just maybe, there is also life on them. For all we know, this right here, this all of this is actually filled with life. So that's kind of cool. And that's Kepler uh, discoveries of 2016. Now, we've also made a very unusual discovery uh, right in this system known as TRAPPIST-1. What we discovered is that this particular red dwarf seems to actually have three planets orbiting around it, and I'll show them to you in a second. TRAPPIST-1, TRAPPIST-2, and TRAPPIST-3. And this was actually the first time that we've discovered exoplanets orbiting around such a small, such a tiny, and very, very cool star. And even though this particular planet is really close to its parent star, the temperature here is very cold, minus 160 degrees Celsius. That is actually really, really, really cold, colder than Antarctica. And the, uh, the star itself is only about 8% the mass of Sun and only about 12% the diameter of Sun, so it doesn't really produce that much heat. But the fact that we were able to discover these three planets orbiting around it is actually pretty astounding. Anyway, moving on to the next uh, discovery, HG 131399AB. Now, this is a planet we're going to zoom into. And this planet is very interesting. This planet would actually make uh, Tatooine jealous because if you were to look at what it's orbiting, you would realize that there is actually, I'm going to accelerate time just to show it to you, uh, there is actually not one, not two, but three stars that it gets to see at all times. There's actually three separate stars that it orbits. And there's the two uh, binary stars, and there is its main star that it orbits right here. And if I were to zoom out of here just to show you how all of this works, it's a relatively complex orbital path. And this is how all of this looks in Space Engine. So there's two binary stars right there, one major star here, and the planet orbiting this particular star. So that's a very cool discovery. Uh, we've made at least two of these uh, this year. We've actually found two different planets orbiting three stars. So triple systems are a reality. Now, another really interesting discovery was on this object known as 55 Kenkri IB. It's orbiting a star relatively close, as you can see. And the cool thing about it is that we were able to actually see its atmospheric composition, which is why right here you can see that it's um, hydrogen and helium. So we were able to use telescopes to not only see this planet, but to actually analyze and uh, detect its atmospheric composition, which is very spectacular when you think about it, because this particular star is like 40 light years away from us. So it's not very close. And as you can see, th there's another planet right here known as Cancrii E, which orbits really, 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 really close to its parent star, making it ridiculously, ridiculously hot, but also cool looking. And speaking of atmospheres and weird planets, another one uh, of these was a planet known as Kepler 2b, which actually has been discovered a long time ago, but more recently we've discovered that its atmospheric composition seems to be very interesting. Now, this particular planet also orbits the star very close, and its atmosphere seems to be composed of jewels, things like sapphires and things like rubies. That's pretty awesome, right? Well, I don't think we'll be actually able to mine them anytime soon, but nevertheless, that's pretty cool. So basically, if you were to go inside of this atmosphere, you would be covered in very expensive jewelry. And dead. Very, very dead, because the temperature here is close to 1000 degrees Celsius. But that's another story. And I guess these are some of the more exciting discoveries, but of course, the most exciting discovery, or technically not a discovery, but a hypothesis, was this right here that you see in front of you, Planet 9. We still haven't found it, we only see the effects of Planet 9 in our solar system, but maybe, just maybe, sometime in 2017, we'll be able to finally discover it, finally find it, and finally identify the actual planet that's uh, hiding somewhere in the sky out there. Whether we find it or whether all of this will be explained in some other way, the future will tell. But for now, these are the most exciting discoveries of 2016 in terms of astronomy. Now, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video and potentially consider supporting this channel Patreon. And also come back tomorrow to learn something completely different, something new, something interesting. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Happy New Year. 
all of the best to you and your family and game you later space out bye bye